Session 323 Chapter 3 Verse 2 الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم. God, there is no deity except Him, the ever living, the ever watchful. Chapter 3, verse 2. The statement, God, there is no deity except Him, is the core of faith. Allah repeats it many times in the Quran for emphasis. Let's analyze this statement grammatically. Allah in the verse is the subject, while there is no deity except Him is the predicate. In this type of sentence, the subject, which is God, has to be familiar and clear in the mind. God says, If you ask the disbelievers who created the heavens and earth and who harnessed the sun and moon, they are sure to say, God. Then why do they turn away from Him? Chapter 29, verse 61 Since God is clear, the predicate of the sentence gives a description that is appropriate for God. There is no deity except Him. Over the ages, those who were hungry for power and influence wanted to obscure the core issue of the one God. That would clear the way for them to amass power and wealth. Islam came to restore clarity and justice. God, there is no deity except Him. Allah testified that there is no deity except Him before any other creation witnessed the oneness of His divinity. He testified to His oneness before He created the angels and before He created those who have true knowledge. Thus, the testimony in the verse, God bears witness that there is no God but Him, is the strongest of testimonies and the pure essence of monotheism. Allah is in no need for the testimony of humans, angels, or any other beings. He says, God bears witness that there is no God but Him, as do the angels and those who have knowledge. He upholds justice. There is no God but Him, the Almighty, the All-Wise. Chapter 3, Verse 18 God is sufficient as a witness. His testimony is that of the self for the self. The angels are true first-hand witnesses as they saw none other than God. The people of knowledge are those who take time to look and contemplate the overwhelming evidence that such a magnificent and exquisitely managed universe must have a creator. Their intellect confirms the authenticity of the testimony of the angels and the Almighty. So when you take a deeper look into the verse, God, there is no deity except Him. You will find it extremely easy and simple. Allah did not want to make the case for faith in the supreme power, a complicated philosophical one. Nor did He restrict it to the people of high culture. Faith and the mandates of worship should be equally accessible and understood by all, from the shepherd to the philosopher, and from the street sweeper to the astronaut. Here is another way to look at the issue of God, there is no deity except Him. Allah has repeatedly declared loud and clear, I bear witness that there is no God but me. Either this is true, and thus the matter ends, or it is not. If this is not the truth, then we ask, where are the true gods? Didn't they hear the challenge? Why did they remain silent as Allah took away the universe from them and said, I alone am the Creator? If these gods did not hear the challenge from Allah, then they are not fit to be gods. And if they heard but did not act, then again they are not fit to be gods. Thus, the case of lordship and deity belongs to God alone until a plaintiff comes forward to contradict him. Till then, the statement, God, there is no deity except Him, remains the ultimate truth supported by ample evidence, prophets, messengers, and heavenly books. Don't we use the same logic in our legal systems? When a lawsuit is filed, and the defendant does not show up to defend his or her rights, the matter is automatically settled for the plaintiff. We also gave the example of a group of friends in a room. One of them finds a wallet on the floor. He holds it up and asks, Does this wallet belong to any of you? 
no one claims the wallet. A few minutes later, one of the people who left earlier comes back and says, I was here earlier and I think I left my wallet behind. It is brown with tan stitching. Since everyone heard the announcement, and no one but this person claimed the wallet, then the wallet is his and his alone. This brings us back to the verse, God, there is no deity except him, the ever-living. As long as there is no God but Allah, then he is the true sustainer of the universe and its affairs. This magnificent creation needs an everlasting power to manage it. Allah must be living life that befits him as a creator and manager. It is an ever-existing life, and it is the source of all life. Allah is the first and the last. Allah is ever-present and ever-watchful over his creation. No one gave him life, and no one takes it away. It is a principle of the divine self. The next attribute in the verse is the ever-watchful, translated from the Arabic origin al-qayyum, which is the superlative exaggerated form of the word qa'im. Why the superlative form? We answer that if God the Almighty is the one who manages all matters of the universe, then he must be ever watchful. Here I would like to ask you a question. Remember when you were a child? Did you have a care in the world? Why not? Because you had a father who took over all the responsibilities of life and provided you with everything you needed. An adage goes, The one who has a father carries no worry. Now let's ask, how about the one who has a Lord who is ever-living, ever-watchful? How should he or she feel? Allah tells you, sleep in peace, my servant, and have no worry. I am the caretaker of the universe. Do you remember what God told you in Ayatul Kursi? He said, Allah, there is no God but Him, the ever-living, the ever-watchful. Neither drowsiness nor sleep overtakes him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Convey my teachings to the people, even if it is only a single verse. Please take a moment to subscribe and to share with your family and friends. Visit us at www.qurangarden.com.